everyone and welcome to today's webinar. We're going to go ahead and get started. I want to be respectful of your time and we have a full uh, program for today. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Sarah Pinder. I'm the Engagement Director for Michigan Nonprofit Association and that means I work to connect our members as well as um, the public to different benefits, resources, and trainings and opportunities that m &A has. So um, as we know, fundraising, grant seeking, um, money in general is very important as it should be to nonprofits, so therefore it's very important to us. Um, we have a commitment to helping you as nonprofit employees or volunteers with this um, topic area. And one of our biggest member benefits in the area of fundraising is GrantStation. GrantStation is an online grants database that you can use to help find new um, grant opportunities as well as many other things that provide lots of great resources and trainings like we're going to experience today. So um, our guest will be sharing with us uh, a little bit more about how to use GrantStation and you're also going to get an overview of um, a recent State of Grant Seeking Report. So two really great things um, that will further your knowledge and education today during the webinar. Um, we do have on the webinar program our chat box and our question box. Feel free to use either one of those to ask questions. We are going to hold questions until the end of the webinar and then I'll be asking our um, presenter to respond to those questions, but feel free to put them in at any time during the webinar um, and we will answer them at the end. Also, um, I'll be sharing with you a link um, that you can see the grant station, the State of Grant Seeking Report, um, as well as we will be sending out the PowerPoint at the end or, or following the uh, webinar. Plus, we also are recording the webinar today, so if you'd like to share this with someone else other than your organization, um, you can do that. You might see your screen go white. That's because I am working up to introducing our presenter, um, and she is going to be showing the PowerPoint from her screen. And um, Ellen Maurer is with us today. She's the Vice President of GrantStation. She has lots of uh, years of experience in the nonprofit sector, so instead of me telling you everything about her, I'm going to let Ellen. Thank you so much for joining us today, Ellen, and I'll let you take it over. Thank you so very much, and I am so happy to be here with you today. Let me just see if I can get this to work. I want the slideshow from the beginning. Now, can you tell me, Sarah, are you seeing the slideshow? Um, I'm still seeing a web browser page of our website, so not the slideshow yet. Okay, hang on. Now you're seeing the web browser page. I want it to show this, and I want it to show this. Now are you seeing it? Now we see it. You're all set. Yay! Okay, everybody, we're good to go. All right. As Sarah, ah, it went away. Hang on. There we go. As Sarah mentioned, we have got an absolute ton of information to go over today. And Sarah, one more time, you're seeing the screen show, right? Yep, I'm seeing it. You're, you're good to go. Excellent. So, a ton of information. I'm thrilled to be here with you. And I'm going to be going through the information quickly. I'm an East Coast girl and I talk fast anyway. So... We'll, we'll get going, but as Sarah mentioned, she's got you covered from uh, A to Z on follow-up data, so no worries. I want to welcome you to the State of Grant Seeking Early Results, and I want to let you know that you are the first group to see these results. We have the reports, of course, but I've not shared them publicly in this fashion with any others. And, and what we hope really is that this brief overview is going to give you an idea of what's new in the grant seeking arena and that it will inspire you to download and utilize the reports. And I do want to remind you, no notes, no worries, as she said, a link is available. And so no worries about the note taking. Think of today's webinar as the fluffy icing on that beautiful cupcake. So first, 
We want to extend our thanks, of course, to our underwriters because they are wonderful people to support us. We also want to thank all of our advocates, and you can see that the Michigan Nonprofit Association is a fine advocate. We extend our appreciation to them. And I think that it's important to say this. Because of the assistance of folks like the Michigan Nonprofit Association and the willingness of grassroots organizations and staff and volunteers, this spring we reached a new high in participation. Over 3,300 organizations, institutional institutions, government entities, and independent grant writers took the time to make their voices heard. Now the data that we're going to be looking at is recent. It's trending. And unlike other, the other surveys, this reflects what happened in the last six months of uh, the year. So it's really fresh. And, and we hope that it will assist you as you plan your grant-seeking calendar, as you choose where to submit applications to, and as you organize your grant-seeking. So, you know, basically what everybody wants to know is who will fund my organization? Now, i got to tell you, I'm on the board of a music and arts education organization, and I support animal rescue groups, and people say to me, hey, who will fund my organization as if I've got this magic wand? Well, I can't just go boom solved because that's not the case. But what I can do is suggest a reasonable level of funding to expect for your organization. I can help guide an organization based on their budget or their location or their mission focus because that does affect the uh, ability to be awarded grants. And I can point out recent trends in grant seeking and how one can use those to your organization's advantage. Now today, we've got three objectives. We want to be able to utilize the data to build cutting edge grant requests. We want to be able to find the data to support the mission. And we want to be able to identify current trends that will help us in our 2016 into 2017 planning. And, you know, basically, why does this even matter? Well, it matters because it's really wise to incorporate knowledge-based grant seeking into your repertoire of skills these days. I mean, originally, when somebody referenced knowledge-based, they were talking about technology, how to store complex structured and unstructured information in a computer. But the term has evolved with the passage of time and the prevalence of the Internet. Today, I'm going to use it as a way of distinguishing writing a grant proposal that's based on the issue or the topic at hand versus writing a proposal that's based on knowing and understanding the leading edge trends in the world of philanthropy in relationship to that issue. Now, in the nonprofit world, benchmarking is basically the process of comparing one's organization, both their internal processes and their performance metrics to industry best, I mean it's best practice benchmarking or process benchmarking, and it's used in management and in strategic management frequently when organizations evaluate various aspects of their practices or processes in comparison to the best practices of others. Basically, this allows the organization to look within a defined peer group and to determine how they can improve uh, usually they're aiming to increase some aspect of their performance. Now, benchmarks can be a one-off event, but it's often treated as a continuous process. And there's a lot of places where you can find usable, meaningful data. I'm going to suggest a few here. Remember, you're going to get the uh, PowerPoint. You don't need to write all this down. One is uh, Innovation Network State of Evaluation Project where they talk about how one should evaluate one's performance. Also, the Urban Institute, I'm sure you all know the Urban Institute. Their nonprofit sector in brief is a wonderful document. There's N10. Can't beat their uh, nonprofit benchmark study. And it even moves into email and fundraising and social media and how your progress there would measure up. And then, of course, there's the state of grant-seeking reports. 
which we're going to talk about today. There are great places to find benchmarks. Now, today, after we look at just a little bit of demographics on who took part in the survey to quantify the results or qualify them, we're going to look at some really recent data on really specific measurements. And I would encourage you to use some of this data to guide your grant-seeking strategy or even within your applications. Now, the demographics, we're going to start with who took part. As you can see, 14% of our respondents were in your regional division, and 3% of them came from Michigan. That's a nice number. I mean, that's over 100 folks from Michigan took part, so thank you. You can also see that mostly uh, those serving an urban population or a combination of rural, suburban, and urban populations took part. The most frequent geographic reach by far was multi-county. That gives you a little bit of an idea of the size of the organization. And then this is interesting as far as the budget. There was an awful lot, uh, over a quarter, 26% of those under $500,000, $100,000 500, to $500,000 in annual budget took part. But then almost the same amount, 24%, with a million to a $5 million budget took part. So let's run some numbers quickly. Here we go. I mean, I've got some good news. Organizations are really actively applying for grant funding because awards are out there. I mean, 88% of our respondents applied for at least one award. Now, of those who applied, 93% of them won at least one award. My sympathies to the 7% who didn't. And of those who applied, this is a key metric here, for three or more awards, 96% won at least one award. And so that's key. If you apply for three awards, only 4% of you will not get at least one of them. I know there's a lack of time, a lack of staff, but it's something to keep in mind. Now, we're also seeing, interestingly enough, an increase in the mid-range level of grants as a percentage of the annual budget. That indicates that more and more organizations are neither overly reliant, over 75% has decreased on grants, or underly reliant. Also, those who only have 10% or less has decreased. As far as funding and support types, uh, there's really no surprise. Project and program support, by far, 44% of respondents. The second most frequent is general support, 21%. And I can see eyes rolling because that means that almost 80% of you didn't get general support and we'd all like it. But you know that the project and program support is where you're going to find your funding most frequently. Now, largest source of total funding. I'm assuming you're expecting it to be private foundations. And no doubt it is. But what we at Grant Station continue to be amazed by is not that they're the most frequent source of awards, but how they continue to increase percentage-wise as the most frequent source of awards. And this year, our most recent survey, they were followed in importance by the federal government, which generally tends to be the case. Now, speaking of the federal government, Here's what the largest award medians looked like this year. Federal awards, the median size was $360,000, 126,000, local government, 40,000. Now, here's, here's where we can go, oh, those private foundations that 40% of you said, hey, they're my funder, 40,000 is the largest median award. Community foundations, slightly under 20,000. Corporate foundations, 25,000. And other sources, the infamous other sources. And you know that includes everything from United Ways to events, whatever, 32,000. So while we are seeing 
more private foundation awards. And while they are indeed the largest of the non-government awards, these government awards are important. Now, largest award trends. The median largest award, the median, across all missions from all respondents was $50,000. And that's remained static over the past 12 months. And you can see we've been tracking this figure for years and years and years. It's the largest it's been since back in the uh, spring of 2013, fall of 2012. We had that same level of consistency. And that's pretty good news. So at Grand Station, we're going to say, hey, we think you should at least plan for a 2 to 4% increase in the grants portion of your annual budget. Now, ARG, right? I love that. Uh, we had a little bit of time to talk about challenges and costs of successful grant seeking. Our respondents, every year for the past five or six years, have told us that their greatest challenges to grant seeking are lack of time and staff. And then they give us detail. They tell us about it. Uh, we ask them to fill in a text box. This year it ran to 100 pages. And we are so appreciative of people sharing what's going on. What I find especially interesting is that increased competition from awards. Back when I started doing this, oh, maybe 2012 or so, was 6%. It's now 16%. It's increasing dramatically with every survey. Also, funder practices and requirements and researching and finding grants for my mission have continued to raise, not as dramatically, but those are your top four, and I think that you find them to be challenging, so does the rest of the world. Uh, the thing is, is that remember, if you can find the time to apply for an award, 96% of those who did three or more applications won an award. Now, that lack of time and staff thing, that's directly related to low indirect and admin costs. As a percentage of budget, nearly 70%, 69% of our respondents said their indirect and admin costs were under 20% of their budget. That's just amazing. But Back to that lack of time of staff again. Over half of our respondents, 54%, told us that they reduced those admin costs or kept them low by reducing staff. While another third you know, increased their reliance on volunteer labor. Volunteer labor isn't always possible, say, if you have a healthcare mission, like it might be with an animal rescue mission. So, I mean, challenges just abound. But keep in mind, back to that figure, 96% who applied for three or more grants won at least one award. Now, we're going to get into some details. My favorite slide. Do you love your alma mater more than you love your dog? Look at those dogs. Well, government funders do. And the, the thing is, is that when you, uh, when you look at types of funders that are more likely to fund your organization, you can see that federal government funding, the funder of the largest award, ranges from 1% of the animal-related organizations up to 50% of educational institutions. So back many slides ago when we talked about the median largest federal award being $360,000, that's great, but if your chances of getting it are very, very low, like we look at animal-related at 1%, or we can look at uh, religion-related 3%, uh, arts, culture, and humanities only 6%, then maybe you should spend your time applying for a funder who's more likely to fund your organization. I mean, also, how much money you're likely to get the mission has a huge impact. While I am correct in telling you that $50,000 was the median largest award among all respondents, 
when you break that down, when you drill it down by mission focus, there's a huge range. Again, from 17,000 for the animal-related organizations to 18,150 for the arts organizations, up to 300,000 for educational institutions. This is the kind of data that's really important to keep in mind. You don't want to compare yourself to the median for all because if you're an animal organization, it would appear that you're doing poorly if you had a $25,000 award. When in reality, you're well above the median highest award. So you get the idea. Now, budget size makes a difference on who is funded. Again, the larger the organization, the more frequent you will find that the federal government is a funder. A lot of this comes from the we want to reach the most people with our dollars concept. But in addition to this, we should keep in mind that if you are a small or medium organization, now is the time to consistently apply your limited time and staff to applications to private foundations because they're most likely to fund you as opposed to other sources. So this is going to be a guideline, especially if you have a, a very limited staff size, as to how to spend your grant-seeking time. And then, of course, we see the largest award statistics, the size of the award. Now, some of this is just so self-obvious. It's not going to be a small organization with less than a $100,000 annual budget and get an award of $500,000. But it'd be a good thing to keep in mind that actually the median largest award is only $5,000 for those organizations. For a medium organization, it's $25,000. And these definitions of size based on budget are defined in great detail in the report that you can download. Now, regional division. I don't know. This always surprises me because I just think, oh, everything's the same. But it is not. Funder activity varies dramatically. For example, private foundation funding ranges from 37% of those in the East, South, Central U.S. Regional Division to 45% of those in the New England Regional Division. And largest award statistics, well, they vary too. I mean, the median largest award for New England is 32.5. Whereas in West South Central, it's $65,000. So that's something else to keep in mind as you consider what benchmarks you should be using. And then there's service area population. Now, we base service area on the U.S. Census Bureau's definition of what defines an area. So rural, I believe, is less than 2,500 people within a given uh, designation and again defined in detail within the reports but there's a pretty big range there I mean local government funding ranges from only 5% of the organization serving a combination of areas up to 11% those in urban areas and again by service population Organizations with smaller service areas definitely receive smaller awards. 25,000 is the median largest award in rural and suburban areas compared to 50,000 in urban or combination population areas. So I've just run through, I warned Sarah I'm going to be quick, but I have just run through a ton and a half of data with you. And please know, you can download all these reports they're free. They're there for you. All of the demarcations I've referenced, there's a report for that. Also, the total state of grant seeking report has an overview on almost all of it, plus some breakouts by mission focus and uh, what else? Budget size and population size. So there's lots of uh, resources for you. But the first question I always get is, what data do I actually use? My answer is, how do you self-identify? I mean, if above all you think of your organization as uh, a mental health resource, then that's what you should go with. 
or if you think of yourself as a small rural animal rescue, well, then you need to perhaps average several of your organization's characteristics. Here you would take uh, small plus suburban plus housing and shelter, take their median award sizes, add them up, divide them by three. Now, you know, it's a simple calculation. It's obviously not hardcore statistical benchmarks, but it's going to give you a much fairer comparison than just saying, oh yeah, nationally it was $50,000 for that highest award. So, okay, here's a couple things you can do with the information. First of all, you can stay tuned for the GrantStation website overview where I'm going to take you through what tools are available to assist you in your grant writing, your grant seeking. I'm going to do a few searches, not quite a few searches, based on those of you who live in Michigan. And then download those reports. Again, Sarah is going to make that information available to you and establish benchmarks for your organization. And then I would make sure that I shared those benchmarks with my stakeholders, my donors, my board members, my coworkers, because it is important that everyone knows what your playing field looks like if they're going to be evaluating you or, or judging your success as a grant seeker. And then, of course, use your GrantStation membership and practice using the GrantStation website so that your research process becomes seamless. Okay, and we're done with that. And now, Sarah, can you tell me, are you seeing the MA dashboard? Yes? Um, not quite yet. We're seeing still kind of the background of PowerPoint. Okay. Let see if I can get to, aha, uh -huh. how about that? Yep, now we're seeing Yay. the dashboard. Excellent, excellent. All right, so you're all MNA members, yes. And so you've logged in, and you're down here at Member Benefits, click in at GrantStation, and it says, hey, it's a member benefit. Click the member benefit. Sarah, did it move over with me? Yep, we're seeing GrantStation now. Excellent. And it says, Welcome Michigan Nonprofit Association. So, yay. All right. Let's see why this is important. Well, GrantStation, as you know, we have searchable databases of private grant makers that accept inquiries and proposals from a variety of organizations. We have profiles of federal financial assistance programs. We have links to state level financial and technical resource providers. And a constantly growing database of international grant makers. Now, I just said something that's really important. Searchable database of private grant makers that accept inquiries and proposals from a variety of organizations. You know, there are hundreds of thousands of funders in the United States. Our database only contains those who are willing to engage with unsolicited inquiries. I'm sure that all of you have experienced knowing about a foundation, but knowing that you've got to find someone who knows someone who knows the wife of a board member's uncle to get an introduction, and maybe they'll talk to you. None of that happens with the funders at GrantStation. They're all willing to engage. That's pretty exciting. Now, a couple things I want to show before we really get going on searching. If you're new to this, take a look at our search guide. It's pretty thorough. It's pretty basic. It's a great tool for you if you're new. And we have a project description worksheet and it says that just pause. Okay, let me see if I can fix that. I want to show the, come on. Okay, I'm back. I, I couldn't get back to show. So let's make sure I'm showing what I should. All right, it's a project description worksheet. And you know what? It's a really simple PowerPoint. Why does it matter? Uh, it, it matters because 
It's simple. It keeps you on track. So go ahead and download this before you get started. Another item I want to talk to you about is search terms. Now, here's an example. Say that you want to get funding for, oh, EMS. If you hit Control F on your screen, it's a really old school technique, and type in EMS, it's going to bring you to, hmm, social change, that's problems. There's more problems, and you're not finding what you want. Maybe there's another term for it. That means if you put EMS as a search term, you wouldn't find it. Let's try emergency. Oh, look. Under safety issues, local emergency services. Oh, that would include fire, like fire trucks or fire training, police. And that lives within Grant Station's database under community and economic development. That's not necessarily where I would have looked for it. It, it isn't intuitive to me. So it's never wrong to go through search terms and put in some of your search uh, ideas, search uh, tools to uh, to see where we're going to house it. Because we're not defined the way a nonprofit necessarily thinks. Our funders self-identify. And we put them in where they believe they should be. So at this point, let's go ahead and do some US grant searches. We're going to start with the US Charitable Giving Database. Here, not only do we have those wonderful independent family, community, and corporate foundations. We also have corporate giving programs, faith-based grant makers, and associations that have grant making programs. That's something to keep in mind. Now, you can search by funder name, or you can do an advanced search where you narrow in by geographic focus, area of interest, and type of support. You could also, within U.S. grants, search for federal grants and loans. And you do so by picking an area of interest, an agency filter, eligibility, keywords, click search. Or you can use a CFDA number. And here we have eight results right now. In addition to federal funding, we link to state grants and loans. And there's Michigan. And this is a convenience for you. We take you right to your state, to your census data that you may need for an application, to community profiles. We also give you federal and state agencies, state agencies, and various state department ready links. So that's just a convenience. We also have international grants. Now, you know, the first thing people say is, oh, this doesn't really matter to me. I'm, you know, in the United States. But if you're in North America and say that you are interested in funding, oh, I don't know, I'm going to say children, child maybe. Let's see what that gets me. Say, get me global funders the keyword child, if over here on that control F you put in United, it's going to take you through and you'll see that some of these will fund in the United States of America. That's something to keep in mind. It's also good for you if you are a Michigan organization that has an international reach. So you choose your continent. You choose your country, and from there you can filter it with a keyword or just go and do a global search. We also have Canadian grants and loans, and this may be of interest to you. You're, you know, you're fairly near Canada. We find that you know, in bordering states, you definitely want to be aware of who's funding because your area of work, these grant makers may fund across borders. We've also found that in the case of sister cities, for example, in uh, the French-Canadian areas, there's lots of sister cities with Louisiana. 
you can submit joint grants. So it's not wrong to think about Canadian grants and loans, or to at least find out what's going on slightly north of the border. Now, in the right area, we give you details on how to get started, uh, you know, your tax status, your budget, your board of directors, building a powerful need statement. We also give you information about how to write a really strong letter of inquiry. We give you information on the grant proposal itself. And we also have samples of proposals that won awards, including a federal, private funders, and more. So you can see you know, what others have submitted that won awards. We also give you some guidance on revisions and editing. I always look at this when I'm doing a proposal. We give you information on things like how to create time. We talk about things like the grant seeking matrix within the uh, grant seeking calendar. I recommend doing this. You know, this is a really basic thing. Again, you pull up Excel, you throw in your criteria, you weight it, and anything that doesn't hit above a certain number, well, that might be a funder that you want to hold off on applying to. But the whole concept of, as an organization, you need to judge whether a funder is a good fit for you and whether you should apply for that award. Actually judge the funder based on your relationship, uh, your eligibility, if you have adequate time to respond, and uh, something I like, how much reporting they require in order to get the award. It, it was a fairly new concept. I used to go at it only from a supplicant point of view. Oh my gosh, I hope they fund me. And I found I was spinning my wheels a lot. So it does not hurt to look at those funders to whom you wish to apply and then subjectively and objectively based on criteria unique to your organization, give them a weight and then focus the most of your limited time on those that have the highest score. We also give you information on uh, you know, building that grant seeking calendar, on how to work with in-kind gifts. Uh, this is a good one. As you build your funder relationships, we give you some sample questions you may want to ask the funder. My favorite, are there unannounced programs that you'd support? It never hurts to ask. So as you can see, there are tons of tools that you can utilize as you go throughout your grant seeking process. But the best tool is going to be advanced search in the U.S. Charitable Database. So, the geographic portion is OR. It's either going to be both national and specific from a geographic point of view, and there you are, Michigan, or it's going to just be national, or it's going to just be specific to Michigan. All the rest are AND, so the more areas of interest or targeted populations or types of funding you select, the smaller your result will be because you're asking for a funder who has stated each of those items as part of their area of interest. So let's take a look. I mean, I'm going to talk about an organization that's focused on the needs of those living in poverty and Everybody wants those general operating funds, even though we saw only 21% of us get them. So National and Michigan was our geography. Let's go ahead and scroll down here to social service issues, poverty. And then I want general funds, general support. Find funders. Okay, I've got 35 records. Now, that may actually be too many records to review initially, because remember, part of the beauty of GrantStation is that we're already pre-screening the funders for you. We're only looking at those who are willing to engage. So you can reduce the amount by eliminating national. And let's see how many 
just in Michigan with an interest in poverty providing general support exists. And I've got seven. And, you know, that's a fairly good starting point. But if we slightly alter this search, I mean, we know only 20% are going to give you uh, general support. So if we say, okay, I'll look for any support, including project and program, now find funders, I suddenly have 27 who fund in Michigan. So I'm going to alter it even a little bit more. And this time, I'm going to go and I'm going to say, okay, we'll keep Michigan. How many funders out there with both national and a Michigan focus have an interest in poverty and provide project and program support and are willing to accept unsolicited inquiries? Look at that. There's 106 of them. All right. You know that's way too many records. So you'll probably want to go back and do what we'd done before, remove national. That brings you down to 27. Bottom line is you start with some combination of these. And if they work with your regional funding, then you can leverage that international funding. So let's go ahead, take it back to just Michigan back to those original seven, and we're going to look at a record. Okay, I'm going to look at the PNC Foundation record. So as you looked at that list, you could immediately tell that some of them are corporations, just like this one. And they almost always only fund in communities that are served by the company, where they have a store or a branch or a factory. Others, you may be able to tell by their name, like the Grand Haven Community Foundation or the McGregor Fund. They have geographic limits. So let's go back and take a peek and look at the McGregor Fund. Okay, they're limited to Detroit, Wayne, Oakland, and Macomb counties. They're telling you right up front. And in fact, we give you the name the snail mail address, the phone, the fax, the email, and the URL to the funder website. We give you the name of the primary contact, her title, and her email, the geographic scope, which is Michigan, but they also focus in these areas, their annual giving, who is eligible, if there are application deadlines, this is great, none, they review them quarterly. And then we give you details on their areas of interest. Now, when we do these records, we do a couple of things. First, we gather as much information as we can from the web. We review their IRS 990. We use other private databases. And then we draft a profile and we send it off to the grant maker to Heidi at the McGregor Fund and have them review it. And the question we ask isn't just, is this correct? But we also ask, are we capturing not only what you're going to fund right now, but what you're planning to fund in the next year or so? And we do that because while you can see what they funded in the past from a 990, what you really care about is what they're going to fund today and tomorrow and next year. I mean, in short, what you really care about is will they fund my organization? So the grant maker reviews the profile. They make changes if needed. Send it back to us, we do additional edits, and then, and only then, do we publish it. And this process gives you data, the quality of which really is unknown. And in fact, our funders often say we're more up-to-date than they are. You can see this was last updated since they're all date-stamped in May of this year, so it's very, very recent. And, you know, most likely you'll continue to search using other uh, criteria and uncover a really robust set of possible funders. So now, let's try something a little bit different. I'm going to go back. I'm going to say clear all of my choices. And I'm going to look for uh, funding for an organization that's active in providing housing. And they're 
I'm going to focus this year on housing for senior citizens. So I'm going to start by saying show me national and Michigan. And from there, I'm going to scroll down to community and economic development, which is where housing is classified. And, you know, I'm going to choose senior citizens as my targeted population. And instead of selecting a type of support, I just want to see what's out there. I have 24 records. Interesting. Now, what happens? If I remove national, and I'm very specific here, I'm interested in housing in Michigan for senior citizens. Now what do we get? And I have 10 records. I mean, that, that's not bad. So clearly combining different areas of interest will bring you different results. And I wouldn't be shy about it. Now, I'm going to go back to searches because the one thing I haven't done is a search by funder name. So you as charitable giving funder name. And there's some reasons for that. I mean, but say you know about a foundation and uh, it's called the Devlig Foundation. You could just put in D E V L search and there it is. That'll bring it right up. If you search for a foundation and it is not here, a foundation by name, you have two options. The one is to consider whether or not it's an open foundation. Is it accepting unsolicited inquiries? Because if it's not, it won't be in the database. The other is to go to contact and contact one of our research specialists or the research director herself. Our emails are right here. We're all very transparent. And inquire. Say, hey, why isn't this? Can you research it for me? And she'll be happy to do so. Now, what didn't I do? I didn't do a keyword search. And, I mean, there's a reason for that. You can do a keyword search. You can search by city or county or deadline or keyword. But you are simply not going to get the robust results you would with an advanced search. My best example of that is I'm in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. If I put Lancaster in, remembering that funders are self-identifying, I get people who are also in Lancaster, California. That doesn't help me in Pennsylvania. And out of those few, there are only two or three foundations that have Lancaster in their name or identify only as Lancaster within the entire database. And yet, if I do an advanced search, I come up with you know, over 100 foundations that will fund in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. We just find it too limiting. So we suggest that you use advanced search always. Now, we're going to try another few quick searches. And I'm going to go specifically to Michigan. And this time, I'm looking for programs that give me funds for technical training for impoverished youth. Remember, it's an and search. So I'm going to go to science, math, and technology for my training. I'm going to choose children and youth as my targeted population. And in this case, I want project and program support find funders. I have 19 records. It's okay. Maybe a bit high, but I can go back. Now, I'm going to change just the type of support because what I'd really like is money by computers and software. Oh, no. I only have three. No, I have none. Okay. That's a significant problem, right? That's disappointing. What happens if I remove children and youth and say find funders, I still have none. Well, that means I'm going to have to go at my search a different way because not every search is going to have a gazillion funders, the perfect number of funders, or even any funders. 
But don't be disappointed. Don't get discouraged. So how can we try yet another set of funders? Okay. I just need to change my thinking a little. So I'm going to clear this out. And now, again, realizing I'm looking for you know, training, technical training for impoverished youth, I'm going to move into community and economic development, employment, job training, and workforce development. And from there, I'm going to say for children and youth. I'm not going to specify at this time a type of support. Oh, look at that. 487 records. Boy, that is an awful lot. So now I can go back. And I will just say, OK, Michigan, that seemed like a good uh, search. So I'm going to say, now just show me what's available in Michigan since I've defined that that's where funding occurs. 28. So between that and some of my initial searches, I will have a very, very extensive list of potential funding sources. Okay, we're going to do just one more search. It's 252. I don't want to take too much of your time. So I'm going to clear it out. And this time, I want to search for health care. And I'm going to go specifically to Michigan. I'm going to move down to healthcare, and I'm going to choose healthcare delivery. I want to increase my capacity, my scope of care. And I'm going to say, show me capacity building funders. And I have 10 records. And that's all right. Now, what happens if instead of capacity building, because we want to increase our scope, but it could be considered our project or program, perhaps. Now, find funders. I'm at 43. So while you could be very specific, who will fund both? Oh, only one type of support in three areas of interest. Look at that. Let's try this. Michigan. And we're still going to go with health care. And I'm going to go with health care delivery. But I must pick one type of support. Uh, let's see if there's any general support available. 16. All right. So as you can see, turning on and off the various criteria is going to give you a different set of funders. The system will tell you if you've done something that isn't going to give you a robust result. And you can then, once you have a nice regional funding base, roll it up into national or even start with national. But do not be shy about trying combinations like we did. You know, Remember, you won't always get 16 records. Sometimes you'll get none. Sometimes you'll get 400. Try them until you get a good number to do your initial research. And remember, each funder we have is willing to engage. There are no invitation-only funders for you to weed through. And that's a really good start on an overview with Grant Station. Uh, any questions today? Thank you so much, Ellen. Um, I haven't seen any questions yet, but putting it out there again, please use your chat function or the questions box to submit those. Um, we'd be happy to answer them. And uh, a great overview of the website. I'm always, when I get in there and get going, amazed at the amount of um, capability in the search function, which you demonstrated very well. But all the auxiliary resources that GrantStation provides you. You really can learn a lot about grant seeking, um, whether or not you've been doing it for a while or if you're new to it and need help um, with the whole process in itself and even writing the grant. So while we're waiting to see if there's any questions, uh, 
This is Trend Track. You link to it directly from GrantStation. You go right to Trend Track. And this is where you can find not only all of our reports for free download, GrantStation TrendTrack.com, but we also offer uh, blog posts, insights, podcasts, and more from uh, some of the bright lights in the world of philanthropy, as well as some of our own authors. Another thing, since we have just a few minutes, that you may find of interest, again, you're in GrantStation, scroll down, click Pathfinder. Pathfinder is a website that assists you with your own personal career path and development. If you click Find Your Path, choose your role. I'm going to say I'm an administrator. From there, I'm going to say I'm experienced. I'm not advanced, but I'm not a novice. And from there, I want help with strategic planning and get recommendations. It's going to come up with a variety of tools that you can utilize for your own personal growth. Some are fee paid. You see the dollar sign there. It includes everything from webinars and conventions through things that are quick study, um, demystifying transparency, practical ways to work together better with your funder. Uh, here's some paid. And then we get into deep dive. I mean, this one is how to create a strategic plan your nonprofit will actually execute. It's paid, but it's a good article. Uh, some free. But the bottom line is you could even get certificates online. So we give you a full assortment from you know, i got a little time. Maybe I'll read up on something through, you know, I really want that certificate. That's available directly from GrantStation. It's called Pathfinder. And I think that you'll find it uh, is kind of interesting, grantstation-pathfinder.com. Were you aware of that one, Sarah? I wasn't. I'm definitely going to look into it. We do have a couple questions for you, Ellen. Okay. Um, so the first is from Kylie. Um, she's curious if there is a way to search within counties or regions within the state, or is that mostly done manually as you're viewing possible funders? Kaylee, you can, if you choose to, go in and put in a keyword. And I'm going to show you my example. I'm going to put in Lancaster. And we'll see as it sorts through all 10,000 or so funders, it will eventually come up with, I think, six or seven possible funders. And as I said, three of those are going to be in California or four of them. We really suggest that you do the advanced search. If they limit geographically, you'll often see that by the name, by the community foundation name. So we suggest you use advanced search. And then since these are pre-screened, there, there's 25 results for Lancaster, but a good number of them are not in Lancaster County. So you can use this. You could do that. Nothing wrong with it. But I'd suggest that once you do that, you don't give up and you go back and do an advanced search. Thank you. And um, we do have another question from Rhonda. She says that there are some organizations that share on their W-9 that they don't accept unsolicited grant proposals. Just to confirm, these foundations are not listed on GrantStation, correct? Our database, important note, our database only includes grant makers that accept unsolicited requests in order to make your research more effective and efficient. Absolutely. Thank you so much again, um, and thank you to everyone who's on the phone and stuck with us the whole time. Um, I will mention, as, as Ellen pointed out in the beginning, this is a member benefit. If you're on the phone and you're not a member of Michigan Nonprofit Association, uh, we'd love to have you, and you can certainly find more information about membership on our website, um, and it is very affordable. It's based on your organization's operating budget, 
and that ranges all the way um, starting as low as $80 for membership dues. And uh, you would get access to, um, to GrantStation as well as many other member benefits. So yes, um, we are recording this webinar. We will be sending it out. Please feel free to share it with your staff um, if you're interested in that. I also know, um, I didn't mention it, but there is an e-newsletter that comes out to our members um, from GrantStation, GrantStation Insider. It's very um, helpful and informative, but uh, as you hopefully have determined from the today's webinar, that's not all GrantStation is. A lot of times we get this confusion from members um, when they see that in their email inbox, they think, oh, that's GrantStation. Oh, that's the Grand Station Insider, and it's a great tool and a great um, resource that they do for us. However, as you can see from today, once you get onto their website, you get in the right place, and there's so much more you can access through Grand Station. So we just continually encourage our members to take some time and um, really get a good idea of Grand Station. So thank you so much again, Ellen. It was a pleasure, and I hope everybody has a wonderful day. Hey, Sarah. Yeah. I don't think either one of us mentioned that right now, should you choose to purchase GrantStation, it is $699 for an annual membership. You're right. I did forget to say that. You can certainly find GrantStation. You can Google them and get to their site, and it is a $700 value. And um, yes, as a member of M&A, you don't have to pay that. So uh, great reason to join as a member. Now, I, I know we're very transparent. We're going to be on sale in two days. But still, I think that the value you get from MNA with Grant Station as a benefit is going to far surpass any price you could buy us for on its own. So uh, I, I join Michigan. Well, thank you for that, Ellen. Thank you. Have a great day. Thanks. You as well. Bye-bye.